Hi everyone, my name is Derek Wang, and today I'll be presenting the project that I worked on during the summer, GTEx to BioJupies, which produces Jupyter notebooks based on user selection of GTEx portal samples through a graphical user interface. So first, just a brief outline of this presentation. I will first introduce the GTEx and the NIH Data Commons projects, then go over the GTEx to BioJupies website workflow, and finally, I will go through a step-by-step -step demonstration of the GTEx to BioJupies application, including showing a Jupyter Notebook report and the analysis within it. So the goal of the Genotype Tissue Expression, or GTEx project, is to establish a tissue bank and a resource database for the scientific community in order to study the relationship between genotypic and phenotypic variation and tissue-specific gene expression. With this tissue bank and database, we can also study how changes in gene expression can affect human health and potentiate disease, and with this knowledge, we can work towards better understanding disease to improve therapeutics. On the GTEx portal, you can access the GTEx dataset, which contains about 16,000 tissue samples from 53 different tissue types from about 750 donors. The samples come from various tissues, such as the brain, the liver, or the lung. For each tissue sample, RNA-seq is applied to determine gene expression levels. On the GTEx portal, the metadata, such as tissue type and clinical data, are stored in a separate file from the gene expression raw data for each tissue sample. Genomics and phenotypic data are also available on the GTEx portal. Next, I will talk about the NIH Data Commons and how it relates to GTEx to BioJupies. The Data Commons is a NIH Common Fund program with the goal of developing a cloud-based platform to house biomedical digital objects such as datasets and software applications. The goal is to make data and tools in biomedical research more findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable, or FAIR. By making digital research objects more accessible and in the cloud, digital objects could be connected in different ways, promoting novel scientific research and potentiating new biomedical discoveries. The Data Commons is currently in the pilot phase. In this phase, NIH decided to use GTEx, TopMed, and AGR datasets as test cases in making these resources more fair. GTEx to BioJupies operates on the GTEx dataset. Through an interactive interface, users can filter subsets of samples. GTEx to BioJupies connects the selected GTEx samples to the BioJupies application, which automatically generates Jupyter notebooks that are complete analysis reports of the selected samples. GTEx to BioJupies is a demonstration of what can be done with a cloud-based platform developed by the Data Commons by connecting the GTEx dataset and BioJupies to enable researchers to further explore the GTEx resource. This is what the user interface for GTEx to BioJupies looks like. Initially, both tables display the entire GTEx dataset. The user can then use the tissue type, gender, and age filters to produce two different groups of samples in each table after pressing the Filter Groups button. Multiple tissue types can be selected. The tables display some metadata, including the sample ID, the tissue type, tissue details, gender, and age group. Once the groups are filtered, the user can press the Generate Notebook button, which then displays the URL for the newly generated Jupyter Notebook. I will now go through a step-by-step -step demonstration of the GTEx to BioJupies application. This is the workflow of the website. For this example, I have used the filters to select the hippocampus tissue type and the male gender for both groups. For group 1, I chose the youngest age group, 20 to 29, and for group 2, I chose the oldest age group, 70 to 79. After pressing the filter button, there are 4 tissue samples in group 1 and 5 in group 2. Finally, the Generate Notebook button is pressed. In order to generate the Jupyter Notebook once the Generate Notebook button is pressed, I utilize the BioJupies API to take the gene expression values associated with each tissue sample and then analyze this data with the exploratory data analysis tools currently available in BioJupies. The file format type sent to the API is HDF, or Hierarchical Data Format, which is used to store and organize large and complex data, such as the GTEx dataset. First, the GTEx metadata and gene expression data are combined into one single HDF5 file, and then a subset of expression data is chosen from the user-filtered sample IDs. Finally, the subset is passed to the BioJupies API for downstream analysis. From the same male hippocampus samples example, 
This is what the head of the gene expression data frame that is passed to the BioJupy's API looks like, with sample IDs as columns and the genes as rows. The beginning of the Jupyter Notebook displays the table of contents listing the analytic tools used and the dataset that was analyzed. Looking at the bar graph plots from the enricher links, we can see that the upregulated pathways and processes enriched in the elderly group are related to the immune system, such as monocyte chemotaxis and chemokine signaling. While these pathways and processes are responsible for normal inflammatory response to infection or tissue damage, they can cause chronic low-grade inflammation in older people, which is a process known as inflammaging. This constant upregulation can result in neurological diseases that are characteristic of old age, such as Alzheimer's disease, as well as many other health conditions like Parkinson's disease, osteoporosis, and type 2 diabetes. The last slide is showing that the Jupyter Notebook's analytical tools, specifically L1000FWD, can predict drugs and small molecules that can potentially reverse the gene expression pattern of the input data, which in this example is the gene expression pattern in young versus old brain tissue. These are the top 10 drugs that are predicted to maximally reverse the aging signature. The first one, L655240, is an anti-inflammatory drug that inhibits platelet aggregation, preventing clot formation in blood vessels. These clots are dangerous because they can block circulation and lead to heart attack or stroke, which are more common in the elderly. In summary, GTEx to BioJupies is a prototype application that demonstrates how we can further leverage the GTEx data with BioJupies. I want to thank everyone in the Mayan lab for making this internship such a great experience. I truly learned a lot, especially as a high school student, and I want to give special thanks to Dennis, who guided me through the day-to-day -day aspects of this project. I would also like to thank Avi and Sherry, who provided me with this great opportunity, and Daniel for also helping me with useful suggestions. Thank you.